Hey everyone, it's Shala from PS I Love You. Thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, today's video and cards is part of the Scrap and Stamp March blog hop called Background Check, and I'm going to be reviewing the Picket Fence Life Changing Blender brushes. Um, as they're a, a new brush as opposed to just using the blender tool there. And the first thing I notice about these brushes is that they are incredibly light and super, super soft on the back of my hand and have a couple different sizes uh, that I got here from Scrap and Stamp, uh, but I'm actually only going to be using the largest one today. So these are really great. Like I said, they're lightweight and uh, very, very soft. So I'm just going to grab some white cardstock here and we'll start out to see how these blend. I'm going to give you my honest opinion on these. And I'm going to start out with some Distress ink here. I've got a microfiber cloth to clean the brush in between. And a little something there on my cardstock, but it should be a problem. So I'm going to start off by putting some of that Distress ink onto the brush and really just kind of rubbing it in. And I'll start off by uh, just bringing that brush onto the cardstock and blending. Now it, it feels very smooth and it seems to uh, not be too hard on my hands. I have arthritis, but as I'm blending along here, I notice it's really, really blotchy on this cardstock and I am not enjoying how this is turning out at all. So I'm gonna continue to work away here to see if maybe the more I blend, the more even that the ink gets on there, but it's just I'm not overly happy at this point. So as you can see it's all blotchy there and that does not make me happy. So I thought well maybe I'll turn it over. Maybe it's because it's the rough side of this cardstock. So I turn it over and I start blending again. Making sure to start off on my glass mat there and then bringing the brush uh, slowly over. Now I have sped this video up in parts just because as we all know the blending process can take quite some time. But as you can see here it is still blotchy and I don't like that. It's not a smooth blend. So I'm trying to figure out okay is it because of the brush? So I bring back the original uh, blending tool here with the foam and I'm blending it onto this cardstock and it is much smoother. It's still a bit blotchy, but it's a much smoother blend. So I kind of thought about this, why this would happen. And then I realized, I wonder if it could possibly be this cardstock, because this is actually a Recollections brand white cardstock. It's not the highest quality, and so the fibers are a little um, not as compressed. So I took some Nina Classic a solar white cardstock here. This is a higher quality, it's 110 pound. And I thought, well, let's give it a go on some different cardstock and see if maybe that's the problem. Because everyone I've talked to has really enjoyed these brushes and have had great results. So I'll start up by uh, inking up this brush again, and then I'll start off on the glass mat there, and slowly bringing it over onto the cardstock. And right away I notice a huge difference. It is that beautiful blend that everybody has been talking about and I am doing a little happy dance inside because this is what I wanted. So as you can see here it is blending so much nicer. Now the only comment that I really have with respect to these brushes is that uh, the handles on them feel very weak to me and as I'm blending I'm really worried. You can see that blend is just beautiful now. I'm going to hold up the the others there. It's just as nice with the blending tool on the cheaper cardstock. Like look at that. This It's just night and day. So it was the cardstock that was the issue, not the blending brushes. If you're using a cheaper quality cardstock, then I'd go with the foam brushes for sure. But I'll continue on blending here. Like I said, what I was noticing with these brushes is that they handle themselves, it feels very flimsy, and I was perpetually worried about actually breaking the handle off. So I have my finger on, on top of the head of the brush there just to add some support, and at times you'll see that I um, I actually grab the, the head of the brush itself and not even a handle uh, to work it through. I just, I was really worried that I was going to break it. I probably won't, I don't know, but it was just a, just a worry of mine. After using that solid uh, blending tool from Ranger there, it's, it's, a, 
it's a difference in how it feels. But cleaning them off, oh my goodness. So you'll see, I'll just kind of quickly scrub it off on my uh, microfiber cloth there on the side. And I'm going to bring some white cardstock over just so you can see that I'm there, there's nothing. There's no ink transfer. Like I literally just brushed it over on the right on that microfiber cloth and it came off so clean. Like you don't see anything. That's amazing. That blows my mind. Because then you don't have to buy 55,000 different blending tools to go with each of your inks. Now this is the Festive Berry that I'm going to be using next. And so I'm going to really speed this up because I go back and forth. It just takes time. But uh, I just love, absolutely love the blending that this brush does. And you can see me test it out uh, to make sure it's not transferring any of that color um, when I go back and forth between the colors. And I brought in a piece of uh, scrap cardstock there. Look, look at that. There's just a little, little bit of red there that was left behind, but uh, I'll spritz it with some water and uh, wipe it off again and it'll be fine. But I brought in that uh, piece of cardstock to lay over top and put my hand on because I noticed that um, I must have had some lotion or something on my hands and you can actually see on the top left hand corner there uh, it looks like my fingerprints there <laughs> it matches up perfectly so I don't know if it happened when I was blending or when I was actually cutting the cardstock into the panels the A2 size panels but just be mindful of that when you're working with cardstock if you have any lotion or anything on your hands um, it it could cause um, little oily spots. So I actually take the foam blending brush here to see if maybe I could blend it in easier into the card with that tool and no it just it it wasn't working. It, it'll just be some dark spots. So just something to keep in mind that when you're doing these blended backgrounds uh, make sure that your hands are clean free of any lotions and oils. Uh, I like to use um, alcohol sanitizer, hand sanitizer on my hands and I'll just have to be mindful when I'm doing this again. So the next one that I'm bringing in here is the Salty Ocean Distress Ink as well as the Mowed Lawn and like I said I want to be mindful of having any oils on my hands so I'm going to uh, hit my hands with some hand sanitizer there and just get any excess ink off from the purple and reds that I was using. And hopefully that will help cut down on any oil transfer. Just making sure I've got all that ink off. A little bit on my thumb there. I don't know how I get so messy and dirty, but I think that's just part of the crafting process. So once I get my hands all kind of cleaned off here, I'll then bring back that brush and we're going to start off with that salty ocean. And I'm just going to kind of scrub the brush on top to really get that ink onto the brush. And then we'll go ahead and uh, start blending here. Again, using that scrap piece just to make sure my oily hands don't leave any residue there. Again, you can see how beautiful that that ink just goes on to this cardstock. So I'll speed it up here. I'm moving back and forth between the salty ocean and the mowed lawn until I get the desired look that I like, the desired blending. And I actually found that the blending brushes blended faster than the original blending tool. I just I got the look that I wanted easier and faster. So I've dried these off and now I've created a stencil with some circle die cuts and I'm using Brilliant Moonlight White Pigment Ink to do this bokeh effect. So I'm putting these little circles of ink and blending them onto my background here. I'm sure you guys have seen the bokeh effect before but you can use circle stencils that you already have or create your own like I did here with some dies. And just layering them here and there. Typically you'll see a cluster of of the circles together and this pigment ink just blends really really nicely on top of that distress ink and then once I get that done this is a stencil from memory box called pop dots and I decided to use this for one of my cards instead of the bokeh look I'll, it'll just be some circles here and you can see the finished look I love how that turned out that uh, brilliance moonlight pigment ink has such a nice little shimmer to it
So um, you want to make sure that before you put this pigment ink onto your backgrounds that you let the Distress inks dry completely and hit them with a heat gun just in case. Otherwise it'll kind of smear a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and dry these up and make sure that all the ink is dry. And I'm using this dis Distress Glaze just to kind of seal everything in. Now, this stuff works great, however, I did a bit of a boo-boo. I should have actually stamped my sentiments first and then treated it with this glaze. I wanted to put the glaze on top because I didn't want any of the pigment ink or the Distress inks to transfer onto anything else because sometimes that can happen. And I also wanted to give it a nice little shimmer look. So I've applied a thin layer of this glaze over top of this panel here, and just with my finger, and then I've buffed it with this this craft cloth that I have just and you can see that that shine that shimmer that it has is just beautiful and then the ink is not coming off onto my hands and I'll do it again with all the rest of the pieces but like I said if you want to do any sentiment stamping you'll want to do that before glazing these pieces um, because what happens is the ink will beat up on that glaze I just love how all three of these backgrounds turned out just beautiful so let's get started here on actually creating and making these into cards. I'm going to use the Say Hello from Concord Night stamp set. I'm layering this panel. I actually trimmed it down just a bit and I'm putting it onto some black A2 size cardstock here just to kind of frame out that inked background. And then I'll adhere it down to an A2 size side folding card. And then once I get everything lined up here, I'll adhere that down. And then for my sentiment, I'm actually going to, uh, you see that square die on the right hand side there, I'm going to just cut out some black cardstock and I will do a sentiment on it just with some Versamark ink and then some white detailed embossing powder. So the sentiment that I chose was happy birthday friend, but it had a happy together there. So I just cut the A off of that sentiment strip. Now I know some people don't like doing that, but there's nothing wrong with it. It won't hurt your stamps at all. I can just reattach the A the next time I, I need the a happy sentiment. I'll hit it with my anti-static tool which is really important if you're doing heat embossing so that you don't get that embossing powder all over where you don't want it. Stamp it with my Versamark ink and this type of ink is really a staple that you need in your craft stash if you don't have it already I use this stuff all the time. And Again having some sort of stamping tool is important as well. So this is just the Ranger White Detail Embossing Powder. I like to keep it in these little containers and then I'm not making a mess all over the place and it's easy storage. Those little spoons you can just get at the dollar store. So I'll heat set this with my heat tool here. And if you've uh, watched any of my videos, you know that watching the heat embossing melt is one of my favorite things to do. There's something satisfying about watching it just kind of melt together and create just such a beautiful sentiment. I like the shiny look. So once that's all heated up I will take my microfiber cloth and just wipe away any of that excess anti-static powder there. Just clean it up a bit and then now I can adhere this down to my card base and I'll be using some 3M foam tape to pop that up. Having this little craft pick here, this is a tonic craft pick that's helpful as well for um, taking off that release paper. So now what you can do is you can bring in some embellishments, some sequins, whatever you like to put on this card. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'm using my little jewel picker here. You can just apply the sequins here and there. And I get them all down and then I thought you know, it doesn't look bad, but I felt like the sequence really detracted away from the background itself. And I wanted the background to be really what was the eye-catching portion of the card, not the sequence. So after I laid it all out, I decided, you know what, 
I'm not going to use the sequins, so I took them all off and just kept the card simple as it was. So the next card I'm going to be using My Favorite Things Kind Words stamp set. And I'll be stamping this on top of this beautiful green and blue background. And then this is where I ran into my whole ink smudging issue because I put that Distress Glaze down. Now it's not that you can't do it, it's just you'll have to be really careful. You'll have to heat set it and I'll show you how I do that um, on the third card. So using this little Stamp Perfect tool here to make sure that I can get a good stamp down and if I have to I can stamp it more than once to make sure that ink goes down. And then I'm just kind of putting my fingers over top. This is the first time I've used this stamp so it's kind of like treating it a bit just making sure that the Versa Mark or Versify, I'm sorry, ink sits nicely on that stamp. It's almost like priming the stamp. And once I stamp that down, I, it's just so beautiful. I love that stark black against that background. So I'm going to stamp it twice. The first time worked out well, but like I said, with that distress ink, it kind of beaded up a little bit where the pigment ink was. So I thought, well, I'll try hitting it with my heat gun and maybe that'll help dry it a bit because it seemed to be sitting on top of that glaze. You can see it there on that white portion there, the N and the E and the S there. It's, the ink is beaded up a bit. But I like the look of it, how that came together. So then what I will do later on is actually I'm going to set that aside and see if it'll dry. I'm going to stamp the inside sentiment. And this sentiment is again from that Kind Words, My Favorite Things stamp set. And I'll line that up in my platform. Sorry, my head gets in the way there. And once I get that lined up, I'll use the same VersaFine ink for that. That's one of my favorite inks for sentiments. And then that finishes this card. No act of kindness, however small. I love that saying. It's just one of my favorite stamp sets for sure. So. What I did is, you can see there the little smudging on between the two S's there. I went over afterwards and I actually put the stamp back on and I stamped it with the Versamark ink and then I heat embossed with clear embossing over top of that just so it would be all nice and smooth and not smudge. And that finishes the second card. So if you make the mistake that I did and use the glaze first, uh, heat emboss over top. This is my third card. I did the I Seriously Cannot Thank You Enough. This is from Concord and Ninth. And again, I did the stamping and clear heat embossing over top so it wouldn't smudge. So my first card that I made, was that was a birthday card. It was actually for my bestie that I've known ever since grade one, a great friend of mine. And I wanted to do something a little special for her card, so I decided to do a ink blended envelope. So I kind of taped out a frame on the outside of this envelope. Now you can see that the ink blending isn't as perfect. Again, it's because it's not a high quality paper. It's an envelope, so it doesn't have the same... Um, compressed fibers as the uh, Nina White cardstock does. But I'm going to use the same effect here. I've done the same colors of ink blending as the card and I'll be using this homemade little stencil here again, that Brilliance Moonlight White pigment ink and just to create some bokeh effect on the outside of this envelope. Again, this is a really cool and neat way to personalize cards that you make is to do something fun with the envelope because everyone loves getting mail except for bills of course but it's nice to see this fun bright envelope in your mailbox you're like oh what's this it just it adds to that fun element of actually getting 
fun mail. So I'm going to go ahead and put those little bokeh circles down and then I'll hit it with my heat gun just to make sure it's all nice and dry. And I'll remove this painter's tape nice and slow so it doesn't rip the paper. And you can see just the beautiful white border that it leaves around the envelope. And once I get the tape all removed here from the envelope, you can see it leaves that beautiful white frame and it's got that beautiful shimmer and shine to it. And then what you want to do is remember to write your recipient's address on the envelope first and then go over top of it with the Distress Glaze. I'll be using a Copic black marker for the uh, address. I'm going to give you a look here at all the cards. This is the first one, Happy Birthday Friend. Then the I Seriously Can't Thank You Enough. And then my favorite, this Kindness card. Here's a look at all three. And just a reminder that this is part of a blog hop. There's some fabulous prizes to be won. So I'll leave the description to that in the comments below to my blog and the others. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more, please go ahead and subscribe. Thanks so much, everyone, and have a fantastic day.